Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. New day, new premium slop for y'all. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. So Doc Pack, the original guy who exposed Mr. Beast, just dropped the sequel that everyone has been waiting for. I worked for Mr. Beast. He's a sociopath. In my humble opinion, I don't think it's as good as the last one. We do get some insane stuff. That Doc Pack has said that he's working on the third one. The majority of the second video, 80% of this video is Jay telling his stories about working for Mr. Beast. And don't get me wrong, some stuff is important there, but to me, the most interesting moments are in the last 20 minutes where we get revealed something extremely disturbing. And if Mr. Beast, not the company, if Jimmy knew this, I don't see how anyone could defend it. It's beyond disgusting. I just want to show you some of Jake's parts, share his story. Then we're going to jump ahead towards the last 20 minutes where the real, and I mean the really, really bad stuff goes down. And uh, this one is a long one, so. If you enjoy it, subscribe, like, share, and let's just get right into it. Weddle, everybody. I'm Jake Weddle. Uh, most people who, uh, if, if you know me from Mr. Beast, I'm, I'm a deep cut. I'm in a few of the videos, uh, uh, sometimes maybe purposefully kept to the shadows a little bit. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the cutting room floor a lot of the time. Uh, but I've, I've been in some videos, I've worked on a lot of them. Uh, I was there from 2019 to 2020, 2021-ish when I came back and did some more. I, I was there when they were authentic, and then I saw the transition to what I feel like is a company he's like a tv show now it went from it went from youtuber guy with a camera to uh amazon the culture around there was very unspoken but there was a vibe there was half the people who if you made jimmy happy you were on the good half and these people got random bonuses and uh were usually moved up had more screen time uh and then there was people who if you had a disagreement or butt heads with jimmy or just you didn't like it you know you were the other half and uh I consistently was in the half that Jimmy did. Jimmy doesn't like me. That's fine. I don't like him either. It's okay. Uh, oh, that's just so good to say. I don't like Jimmy. I, I hate you so much. Uh, he didn't want anyone to get more popular or have more of a a way out necessarily. Like, oh, I'm doing my Twitch thing on the side. Don't do that because you could get famous and leave and talk about me negatively. First two things I want to address here. When Jake says that he was there when, back when it was just Chris, OG Chris, the goaded version of Chris, when it was Chris, Jimmy, and you know a few other people when it felt more amateur and not like this giant disney nickelodeon production it just feels like a giant multi-billion dollar corporation is making these videos and maybe i'm just old school maybe i'm just hitting unk status right now but i genuinely enjoyed mr beast back when it felt more simple i'm not a big fan of these yo guys this is insane explosions going everywhere jimmy shouting at the camera adhd editing editing 35 billion different camera angles and shots. I personally don't like that. I find it a bit annoying and in low key, maybe this is just me being triggered. All right. But it kind of makes me feel like a baby and Jimmy has candy in front of me and he's like, keep watching, you know, keep watching and I'll give you the candy. And I get it. That's every YouTuber ever. I completely get that, but there's ways to go about it. It just feels too corporate. It just feels too squeaky clean. And the guy says he worked for Mr. Beast in 2019, 2020, and then he left and then came back. Now, this is not me being rude, but if you didn't have a good time working there for the first two years, why come back? Genuine question. I'm not saying I don't believe him or he's full of BS because he worked at Mr. Beast. I didn't. I'm just asking questions here. Hopefully he answers it, but I'm just thinking if I had a shitty job and people would treat me like shit for two years, what would I ever go back? I don't know, maybe I'm wrong and maybe he'll answer why. Maybe they offered him an insane amount of money, but then at that point, it's on him. If a work environment was toxic, good on you for leaving, allegedly that was a situation for him, then why come back? I'm not saying I don't believe him. I'm just saying, why go back to the toxic work environment? What, what would you say is the fakest video that you worked on while you were there? Fakest video that I worked on while I was there. This is the extent of the, the fakeness that I was involved to. This is like, <laughs> admitting to my complicity. I was a writer there and we were working on a video, uh, crushing my friend's car with a rock or meteor or uh, something. It was, it was a rock or a meteor in the title of it, I can't remember, but he wanted to do a prank where unbeknownst to the person, he takes a rock, crushes their car, and they're supposed to think a rock came out of space. We're gonna take a meteor and we're gonna put it on Weddle's car. We're gonna take another meteor and put it on Marcus's car. Both of them have no idea that we're doing this. Weddle and Marcus are probably shocked. They had no idea. And so that was the one and only time I had to, huh, my car, what? And on the fly, I saw him, because uh, Marcus was in that video, so Marcus is calling his mom. Marcus genuinely had no idea. He was, he was he genuinely had no idea. But uh, So Marcus is calling his mom, and his mom's freaking out. And I'm like, oh no, they're going to call my mom next. 
So I had to text my mom, who had to beg to get the title very quickly. Now she, I am text my mom, I go, I go, Mom, I'm about to call you about the meteor thing. You have no idea? Be surprised. And then I hit send, and then they go, call your mom now. <laughs> and I call my mom and I tell her, and oh, she should have got the Oscar. Oh my, God, on the fly, she goes, what? I'm on vacation. Mom, my car has been um, destroyed. Wait, what? <laughs> A meteor hit it. Jesus. The, la the other thing I talked about was uh, there was another writer there, uh, older comic, uh, black guy, he had a kid, and uh, I got paid more than him, and I thought that was wild because he was older than me, had a child, uh, we're doing the exact same job, and uh, well, I'm some 20-year-old fucking white guy, why am I getting paid more than him? I brought that up. Yeah, you know, I was talking to this other writer, like, it's, it's fucked up, you know, that that's how the pay is, and I want you to get paid more, you know, because you deserve to get paid more. You know, I don't have a kid. Um, and he didn't want to rock the boat. He, did, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat. He was just... I like my job. I like my job because when you, when, you, when you grow up with you know, nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know. You get a little something, you don't want to lose it. And if I'm wrong, people, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'm just slow, right? So correct me if I'm wrong here. Jake wanted the black guy to make the same amount of money as him or more. As according to Jake, the other guy, you know, he wasn't getting paid enough or as much as him. And he had a kid and, you know, awesome for you to stand up for your colleague. The way I'm assuming Mr. Beast works is the people who are on camera because, you know, they're not the faces of the channel, but, you know, they're semi-important. I'm talking Chris, Chandler, and back in the day, this guy, right? He will show up time to time. If you're in front of the camera, you make more than the writers. Like, that's not just for YouTube, but that's across entertainment. The writers, unfortunately, they don't get paid as much as the actors. Do you think the writer for the next Marvel movie, Doomsday or whatever it's called, do you think that guy or those guys, those individuals, those very talented people, do you think they're getting paid half of whatever Robert Downey Jr. is making? He's making, what, 80 million? Are writers underpaid? Absolutely. If they write good stuff, they should be paid a lot of money. They're not Robert Downey Jr. They're not, you know, these big actors who draw people in into the movie theaters. And I'm guessing it's kind of the same thing here for Mr. B's. Jake's heart wasn't a good place, but the guy wasn't constantly in the videos. So why would he be making the same if not more money than you, if he's not going to appear in the videos. Once again, this is not to discredit Jake. I'm just trying to see all sides. It's best to stay neutral and stuff like this and not go full one way, which is a Mr. Beast defender route, which is Mr. Beast is innocent and he could do no wrong. In my opinion, that's dumb. And in my opinion, it's also pretty dumb to go full in on Dog Pack and be like, Dog Pack is exposing Mr. Beast for the shitty person he's been, and I will never defend him in my entire life. As some YouTubers are doing, because it's an easy thing to do, and it's a way to not get any hate. And the reason why I'm staying neutral and I'm trying to understand both sides, and this is absolutely not to discredit Dog Pack here, he brings some pretty solid points in his first video and towards the end of this one. But the thing is, if Mr. Mr. Beast ends up responding and he proves a lot of the things wrong, which I'm still waiting, it's been two weeks, it flips everything and everyone that defended Mr. Beast blindly is going to look like a fucking idiot. I say this with every story, there's always two sides to it and right now we're hearing dog packs and some of his criticism is extremely valid. But we still need to get the Mr. Beast side. People may call me a fence sitter, there's a difference between being a fence sitter 24-7 and staying neutral until the other part comes out. If Mr. Beast drops a video and he's like, yeah, I did this, this and that, then that switch is everything and if mr beast is in the wrong i would a thousand percent criticize it because now we got both stories and one of them said yeah i did it then you know feast on the beast if mr beast responds it could uh ruin a lot of people's credibility the people who are a thousand percent anti mr beast i'm not saying dog pack is a liar um, every story has two sides because dog pack does say this about mr beast at the start hundreds of messages from former mr beast employees um, and i had them all like send proof of former employment you know just people showing their support or telling their stories of, of you know fake videos or unsafe practices uh you know toxic workplace stuff like that uh, I'm not really going to get into those claims because for one, like most people want to stay anonymous, which I understand. I, and also like, I think most of that stuff's just been covered with, with, you know, the news coming out about beast games and everything. I, and also I have like more serious allegations that I want to start covering. Uh, also, I heard from a very credible source that Mr. Beast has been sitting on a response to part one uh, because he was worried if he posted it, I would instantly respond with part two, you know, like a, like this is Kids Bop, Kendrick Lamar versus Drake. Uh, also, I know Mr. Beast's secret CEO has been practically like harassing my people on, you know, hey, what's in part two? What, what does he know? Um, 
So I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three, so you don't have to harass my people. It will be about serious allegations of, of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes. Uh, and I'll make sure to give you full credit and, and plaster your face all over the screen when we talk about that. I'm seeing kind of a mixed reception on Twitter. Another part two is out. I wonder if Mr. Beast is going to drop the video now responding to everything, or he's going to wait for part three and then drop it. I don't really see Mr. Beast dropping a video now, and then Dog Pack drops part three, and then Mr. Beast responds to part two, and then they go back and forth for like a month. Either A, Mr. Beast is going to drop a video in the next day or two, responding to both part one and two, or B, which I think is the most likely here, is wait for part three to drop, and then Mr. Beast drop a response to everything. There's definitely pros and cons to both. A pro would be you get on top of everything, you address some stuff, and the con of waiting until part three is that by then the damage has been done. I'm really intrigued to see what Mr. Beast does here. When I saw it, all that stuff start coming out and the potentiality as of this moment of recording, you know, I know this has been happening fast and stuff has been coming out so fast. Uh, just the potential that Jimmy could have been in those Discord chats or even the potential that he participated in those Discord chats. After the shit he did to me. Outside of it, Chris Tyson, did you really send me or hear about any sexual misconduct at the company? I've heard rumors. I can't confirm or deny anything. I don't have any tangible evidence, but I've heard stuff that I, I if it could be investigated, that'd be great. But it's like water cooler talk. But I've heard things, yes, of course. I heard, you know, People have been let go for sexually assaulting some very young people. The idea that Jimmy didn't know or that Jimmy was covering stuff up. He didn't want stuff to come out. You know, he's very careful about his image. You know, the tangible proof that he knew but covered it up. You know, how do you prove that, you know? Well, there was a known sex offender, registered sex offender, convicted sex offender, on the registry and everything, who worked there. And like you can, you know, someone pees in public, you're on the registry, you know, you, you get it, you can still have a job after you're on the, you, that, that's not one, that's one thing. You know, you go to prison, you get rehabilitated, that's one thing, you know, like if you do your time, that's fine. I, I think there should be read the rehabilitation in this country. But that guy, from what I hear, I, I can't confirm or deny, from what I hear, he's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. So yeah, this is what I'm referring to, the ending being the best part. Once again, to the people in the back, I'm not here to discredit Jake and his feelings and his emotion and his story. And it's good that he finally got it out of his system. If this turns out to be true, if Mr. Beast the company or if jimmy hired this guy and i have who it is uh and it's public i'm not leaking anything i honestly don't see how anyone could uh defend this so the intern anarchist said mr beast allegedly has a sex offender in his company who targeted a victim between the ages of 1 and 11 years old so he pulls up this so he okay i don't know what's taking so long my internet fucking sucks okay so he pulled up the record uh risk level tier 2 moderate risk April 21st, 2010, and please pay attention to this bottom part, all right? This stands for Delaware. Then the internet anarchist says, Chris Tyson gave us a hint. It's Jake the Viking's brother-in-law. Jake the Viking is a former Mr. Beast crew member. Chris says, never ask Jake how he protected his kid or his family from his bro-in-law. And Chris Tyson responds with, who are you keeping your company describes a lot about you. And Chris Tyson shows this screenshot, and it's literally the same R word, four degrees sexual intercourse, victim less than 18 years old, victim's age, one to 11, state Delaware. This is massive. <laughs> Some may say humongous. Okay, I'll stop. This is kind of serious. <laughs> They're calling my brother-in-law slash manager Delaware, and because that's his name. And here's the crazy part. If Mr. Beast knew, not the company, if Jimmy knew about this, and he still hired him just because this was Jake the Viking's brother-in-law, I don't see how anyone could defend that. He's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. And they covered up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it all started. And 
you know that he knew and because he'll be in videos, he'll be in thumbnails, he's, he'll be around. And whenever he, he, he is, he's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you are a registered sex offender? And that your face could be looked up on a thing? How much more can you literally cover up a sex offender? With a physical mask? Like, do I have to, is, how, is it more on the nose? Delaware, yes. I need everyone's phones. I want them all to FaceTime their family. All right, everyone, it's time to FaceTime your family. So yeah, we can clearly see it's Delaware. They call him by name. Pretty ironic that this is a video about spending 24 hours in prison. It's not an allegation. He's legitimately a sex offender. He got charged for it. So we have that example. And then we have this other one. This is from February 10, 2019. And this is the one where he does have a mask. The, the $10,000 prize is still here. Whoever steps out next doesn't get anything. And the other two get five grand each. Whoever steps out, if Delaware steps out, you two get five grand. Ethan steps out, you two get five grand. It's still five grand each. Once again, I'm trying to be as fair and equal to everyone, except Delaware, because that shit is confirmed. You know that this video has been all over the place, and that is because it's such a rabbit hole. There's so many things to take a look at. I, I don't know why they let him go, because there's there's rumors back and forth. You know, so I don't know why they let him go, but he didn't leave at one point. Even if that guy didn't do anything, they still knew about it, and he was still around. And... What if he's one of the people in the Discord servers? What if he's not? I don't know. But when I was there, they called him Delaware. It's like, why, 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 do, you, why do you call him Delaware? I didn't, I didn't know. Apparently, they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. That's his nickname? Colloquially? Like, you know, yeah, it's Delaware. You don't ask him why. Yeah. The fuck? And Jimmy knew about it? The likelihood that he didn't know is astronomically low. Yo, it's Sensitive Society from the future. Uh, quick update. So I've been working on this video since last night, as soon as it came out, just trying to get everything right, trying to see every site possible. You know, I went to bed, woke up, continued to edit, and then I saw that Jake the Viking responded to the whole Delaware situation. Here's the truth. Yes, Delaware is my brother-in-law. Yes, he is a registered sex offender. When he was 21, a 16-year-old girl accused him and others of a a when she was 11 delaware took a plea deal that's why there was no jail time but he still had to register his nickname isn't delaware because he can't go back to delaware he's from delaware and please take a shot every single time i fucking say delaware that was the dumbest thing i've ever heard he's been back several times he was hired before i was and was actually the reason why i got hired at mr beast before being hired delaware sat down with jimmy and sued jimmy's mom and explained them everything so yes jimmy knew but again this incident happened in 2010 Delaware was hired in 2017, 2018. Delaware was also let go from the company before I was. But in my opinion, if that was my company and if I ever have a company, I will never in a million years hire a registered sex offender who did something to an alleged 11 year old. So this confirms that Jimmy knew. If that was my company, that was my brand and I'm making content for younger people, there's no way in hell I would ever in a million years hire a registered sex offender period i mean at that point jimmy might as well hire edp to take care of the bakery you know what i mean it's so fucking over once rolling stone starts writing their articles about it once you know all these big corporations talk about it jimmy knew what he did and he still gave him a job what this guy delaware did was a lot worse because at least chris tyson i here to defend chris tyson but as far as we know he didn't actually had intercourse with a minor unlike delaware he harmed a child a child not even the teen okay not even the preteen loki a child how could anyone defend that and why would anyone ever hire someone like that if you're in the sex offender register it seems pretty obvious you should not be participating in a youtube show primarily aimed at children you knew and mr beast knew for years that this guy was a convicted sex offender who violated an 11 year old girl now you sit here when it's all exposed and finally say something where you should have said it years ago you're just as complicit as the rest of them. How could anyone fucking defend this? And I swear to God, if I see one YouTube comment by some fucking moron that's like, uh, but guys, he changed by that logic. In 10 years, should we forgive R. Kelly? Forget everything that EDP did in like eight years. By then, 
you know, it's 11, 12 years ago. People change, Oscar. People change. I swear to God, if anyone gives me that fucking BS reason of that was so long ago, you give the poor guy a job. No, <laughs> no. This isn't some iffy, tricky situation. When you're like 20, uh, you know, you get caught talking to a 15 year old, which is still wrong. Right. This is a million times worse. An 11 year old girl was harmed and Mr. Beast decided to hire that person. And thanks to Jake, it's now been confirmed that Jimmy and his mom knew. What excuse can they give out? If you harm an 11 year old girl, you deserve the absolute fucking worst. A little concerning that he was around once again this video. All right, so finally I have a recorded phone conversation. The person on the other end of this line is a, a different former Mr. Beast employee uh, talking about Delaware. Um, also, apparently before this phone conversation got recorded, the person on the other end of the line said that the Mr. Beast team was actually trying to expunge Delaware's record uh, off the registry. And that's what actually like sparked this person to start recording. Okay, so Reed is Mr. Reese's former manager who was in the last video telling Jimmy, you know, hey, don't promote gambling to children. Uh, so, you know, I think I think Reed's taken uh, two W's this month, you know, uh, don't promote gambling to children and uh, don't have offenders on payroll. Also, yeah, just from where I'm sitting, it seems extremely unlikely that Jimmy wouldn't know, but you know, I know that that's, I'm sure that's the defense he'll go with. The fact that that sexual predator was involved in some way or another, that's extremely concerning. That should be the highlight of this video. In my opinion, the interview with the former Mr. Beast employee should have been his own separate video. And there's so many twists and turns. That's why I'm not being like, this is definitive. It's best. You sit on the sidelines, make your video, and don't treat this as a fucking sport in a team. I'm rooting for Dog Pack. I'm rooting for Mr. Beast. This is not a fucking sport. In times like these, it's best not to have a horse in the race. Just when you think it's over, nope, we're, we're gonna pull you right back in. <laughs> With that said, what do you guys think of this situation? Please let me know in the comments below. I'm shocked. I do feel bad for Jake and the conditions in which he was treated. Do I think Jake is a, you know, fucking crybaby cloud chaser? No, I don't think so. I think he was asked or he asked for his story to be told and it was told. A lot of questions remain unanswered and hopefully Mr. Beast has the balls to respond to this. Anyways, this video is way too long. You know, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. W, L, whatever you guys think. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Uh, and, you know, whatever happens, I'll keep you guys updated, all right? Peace out. Bye.